What the hell happened last night? Okay, oh my Abby. Last night. <clears throat> oh. Let's do this right and have a proper honeymoon. I love you, Pigeon. Welcome to Gatito, Mexico. Hola! Senor Maddox! Arriba, y arriba, y arriba! You know, it's just crossed the threshold. <gasps> well, this isn't too barbaric. <gasps> no, but it was so cute with our initials on it. T and A, because you got the best. <laughs> this marriage is starting off on the wrong foot. <laughs> Don't you want to have some fun? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. This is not about his needs. This marriage is about your needs. Great to see you both again. Um, you know, Beautiful Disaster was such a fun, fun film. And now a, a sequel, a Beautiful Wedding. Um, tell, tell me about what's going on in this one. Well, um, Travis and Abby uh, are very drunk and they get married and they wake up in like a bit of a hangover situation. They're like, oh my God, what happened last night? And then they get a scary phone call from a bad guy and have to um, flee to Mexico to hide from him. And then in Mexico, they have a crazy honeymoon and bachelor and bachelorette parties and um, just chaos ensues. Boy, you're good at that. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Torn out of today's headlines, I tell you. <laughs> Nailed it. The elevator uh, pitch. Virginia, in, 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 do you enjoy uh, going back to Abby and, and, and uh, revisiting her? Yeah, she's a great character. Um, you know, every character that I've ever played, I, I always have a spot in my heart for them. And is, Abby is, is no different to that. So um, she's so passionate and funny and um, strong. And uh, yeah, it's always a blast going back to Abby. And Dylan, uh, you and Virginia, uh, you know, have a, have a dear friendship. Uh, it, that helps out in all of this, doesn't it? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think that's the core of chemistry in general, is that you actually have to like the person that you're acting alongside of. And I'm blessed to say not only with Virginia, but also all of our cast and crew we were really close to from the first movie as well. So um, I think this was part of the reason we are so excited to come back to the second one. Uh, Dylan, is there any hesitation on your part to do a sequel? I mean, uh, it, it has to be good, I would imagine. I mean, I think that there's always hesitation to do sequels as an actor in general, just because you want to see the product and you want to see um, the script and and where the character goes. And but I think that's like part of part of acting is that. Number one, for me, what's most important is always working with people that I love and being on a good set because that's so much of your experience, which I knew was already going to be a sign off for me. Um, and also the progression of the character, which I think like Travis learns a lot in this movie. And I think he's coming away with a different perspective. And I think that that was important for me. So, uh, Virginia, in being number one, number two on the call sheet, I mean, is do you enjoy the responsibility of, of, of setting the, the pace for the for the set for the for the production? Um, you know, I think that it's it's such a um, a group effort and such a collaborative art form that like you know no matter what number you are on the call sheet, like I think it's your responsibility to bring good energy and to be collaborative and from um, you know the below the line crew people as well. I just think it's important to just like be collaborative. So no matter where you fall on the call sheet, I just think it's it's a fun part of what we do to just show up with good energy and good vibes and you know treat people how you would like to be treated. Uh, and, and following up on, on what Dylan said, I mean, there's certainly a, a need for screwball comedies again. And, and uh, Virginia, I mean, are you are you delighted to do comedy? Is it something that you're passionate about? Um, it really scares me. I, I'm all very out of my comfort zone in comedy. I much prefer crying to like trying to make someone laugh. I think that's much harder. Um, but uh, what about but, cry laughing. Oh, that's even harder. Hey. <laughs> Um, but we had so much fun and uh, definitely when you're working with a director like Roger who has such a great comedic sensibility and Dylan as well, our whole cast, um, we, we had so much fun. Comedy is definitely really fun to make. Dylan, uh, will you be hopping behind the camera more and more, maybe directing and, and doing more producing? Oh, uh, I don't know about directing. I, you know, it's funny, I've been asked this a few times, but uh, my thought process on directing is this. 
there are a million people I know even personally who really want to direct and who I know would be better at doing it than I would be because of the sheer merit that they really want it. <laughs> I might have like on set experience, but working with directors for so long, I don't think acting and directing is comparable. I think people like to compare those two, but I think that's oftentimes a mistake. Producing, I would like to do more of. I would, uh, you know, I have this movie coming out this year called The Duel. That was my first time executive producing, um, and I'd love to do more of that. Um, and that's really just not because I like producing, but I also just love supporting projects that I know my family and friends are making through their own visions, who I trust and admire. And so that that is really that side of it. But directing, I don't know, man. What Seems about tough. you, Virginia? Stepping behind the camera. Um, I, I've produced and I love producing. I definitely want to be a part of making projects from the ground up, whether or not I star in them. I just like that process. Um, but I completely agree with you. I think often people are just like, I want to direct and like take a job away from someone that like desperately wants to be a director yeah. and would have a better vision that I would have. I'd love to facilitate a great director by producing a project with them, but um, I don't think I would, I would be a director myself. I also think so much of like what you do on set with a director is like their directing style as well. So yeah. you can have a lot of impact and say as an actor yeah. with your director as well. So I don't, yeah. Virginia, what do you think audiences are going to take away from watching Beautiful Wedding? You know, I hope they have so much fun and they laugh a lot. And I just think it's a fun, silly movie that feels of an older age to me. And um, I hope it's the return of, of screwball comedies and people really love the film. And Dylan, same question. Uh, I like the perspective that Travis and Abby are definitely not perfect uh, rubrics by which you would expect, you know, romantic leads to be. They're kind of grungy. They're kind of dirty. They're a little trashy. Um, and uh, I like that even despite all those, they really love each other very deeply and they're working towards making something work. And I think that's a realistic, cool take. So I hope people walk away feeling like that, that, that was well. I hear, I hear that the, the third film in this series will be on top of a tower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never <mind>. yeah. <laughs> Different movie. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, it's a pleasure to catch up with you guys again. Thank you so much for your time. And again, Likewise. congratulations on Beautiful Wedding. I, I thought it was just so much fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys take care. I You're suffocating her. She's my wife. She has a bad habit of disappearing, and I don't want that to happen to either of us. We want you to fight for her. You don't see what's staring you right in the face. Love. I don't even know what to say. You'd say yes. introduce you to Cassie Hull. Hi. She's a colleague of my friend, Michele Tellini. I hereby appoint you, Cassie Holt, special investigator to the murder of a brother investigator. Whatever they were looking for, I'm guessing they didn't find. Continue tracking the, the money trail. Did it say anything about a hidden room? Not supposed to be any hidden rooms. I've never seen anything like this in my life. It, this is just my my knuckles are still white. That's how <laughs> exciting this is. Oh, you flatter us, Tony Toscano. I have to. <laughs> uh, we love it. <laughs> uh, Shelley, tell me a little bit about your character, um, uh, Jamie. Uh, boy, she's she's involved, isn't she? 
Nice choice of wording. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we'll just go right in. Jamie was abducted when she was 14 and and put into this really wealthy and influential cult and she escapes somewhere around 10 something years later and um and she's out for revenge. And and uh, that's just part of the uh, of the thrills in this movie. I mean, this is such a it's jam packed with all kinds of really interesting twists. Alice was 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 that what what brought you into uh, into the, uh, the 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 film was all the twists and turns. Um, I think probably obviously Antonio Banderas, but then the subject <laughs> <laughs> who was a wonderful to work with actually, very natural actor. But the subject matter to me, um, you know. I, this kind of um, sexual exploitation happens under our noses um, in our cities and is rife. And it it felt like a very uh, important subject. And I thought Cassie, the character, was very well fleshed out. And I liked how it was, as Shelley and I have discussed, a sort of female um, revenge thriller. And it was a woman saving a woman and the women you know, come together at the end. So there was a lot of things that appealed to me about um, about the little package they sent. Yeah, uh, but it was a yes right away. Did you have to audition, or did they want Alice Eve? I did. I did not audition. You're to that point now in your life. No, no. <laughs> it, 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 often, no, it, it's. I would never say never when it comes to auditioning because if you, uh, if, if some wonderful auteur offers you the chance for something and they want to see you do it, I would happily, wonderfully like prepare that. I, I believe in, I actually quite enjoy it sometimes, to be honest, but no, I believe in it. You're never too big to audition. I also was an offer, which was so cool. I saw Antonio Banderas, Alice Eve, Ireland, I'm in. And we uh, were lucky to have you. That's why I jumped at this interview. I had Shelley Hennig and, and Alice Eve. I, I'm not going to say no to that, no matter, no we're matter what. You duo, right? Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys need to star in every movie. I think. Done. Um, well, we like each other. Alice, was there a lot of training for you in this role, uh, playing, uh, you know, an investigator? I did this Marvel TV show called Iron Fist, where I played a character called Typhoid Mary. And uh, I had a few, like, little tricks up my sleeve from that very intense training with these wonderful stuntmen in Brooklyn. So I used those. Um, I wouldn't say that um, I have the physicality that Shelley has in terms of like the believability that I could do a high kick and get away with it, but I managed to, well, I do my best. I, I, I definitely have a violence inside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking that earlier that like it really, it, it comes from that. Like as a woman, yeah. we were talking about uh, self-defense and I think it's it's an a energy that you put out, which is like, no, you're. I'm not. You know, gonna roll over and, and play dead here. I've been doing that. I mean, I moved to New York when I was like 17, 18. So, God, yeah, God, it's. Yeah. It, and Alice, your role is very intimidating. I mean, it, you really do have a real grasp on this character, which, which makes her so much believable to the audience. Um, well, I think we, we, it was lucky we skewed her to a sort of nerdy librarian because inside me is a very deeply nerdy librarian. And so that, it was through that that I found access. This woman who's obsessed with research and details and then through that has expanded into, you know, having a gun. And But the ultimate appeal for her is uncovering secrets. I, I, I really, really appreciated how strong these women were and and you know how close you guys were to your characters you could feel it as an audience oh that's so sweet thanks Tony. um alice i'm going to give you kind of the last word in our interview what do you think audiences are going to take away from watching cult killer oh god shelly save me now <laughs> i uh, <laughs> i think that honestly i very much enjoyed the film i think it like it, it works as a revenge thriller um, I think, honestly, I every time I read the news about sex trafficking, sex exploitation, sexual trafficking, I I'm like, what does it look like? What is this story? And I think to see it told, ultimately puts a narrative in people's head that will allow it to move to move towards stopping. Like ultimately, we'd like it to not be around in our society. So, 
I think it tells the story vividly enough that makes people not want to not want to have it and maybe support the end of it somehow in whatever way they can. But please, Shelley, say something if I've missed it because that was overwhelming being told I had the last word. I know it gets. I got real sweaty for you. Uh, no, I know. The thing is, like you know, it it only takes one person to listen and believe you. And in this case, it was Cassie. And I mean, I've I've read stories like that, so it it is possible. I, I want to thank you both for your time tonight, Shelley. You've always been so nice to me and and uh, and kind whenever we talk, but. Uh, I have to go back to She's Out of My League. I met uh, Alice uh, oh. for the junket, and I, I can't believe how nice this person is. She is just <laughs> oh. a heart with legs. I second you, that. You have been my favorite person today, Tony. You've said oh. the nicest things, so thank you. is under attack. Some new gang wants to take our place. It's time for my brother to step up. I don't want to be a gangster. What if I just want to do what I want? We have a word for them, Taiwan. American. Guys, congratulations on such a funny, funny, and and wonderfully built show. Tony, oh, thank, thank you so you. much, man. I'm appreciate, really appreciate it, Tony. It. Thank you. Man, uh, I, I, I can't believe, uh, you know, how intense this is, and yet it's just got a great sense of humor about it. And uh, um, Justin, you do so well in this, as you know, kind of playing the the protective brother. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Tony. Appreciate that. Uh, do you have a lot of martial arts training? Uh, I started when I was young. I started when I was 17 in Muay Thai, which is Thai boxing. Um, nowadays, I'm more into jujitsu. So I recently got my blue belt, and I did a tournament in July. So yeah, I've always been really into it, but and it's always been a dream of mine to do perform in stunts and fighting. Um, the stunt training process for this was about three months, um, ten to eleven ses sessions maximum per week. But uh, yeah, we had a, we had a crack team. So guys like Justin New, Michael Lair, Eric Brown, all original John Wick guys. So we we had a, an incredible team. Well, I guess. Uh fighting for the screen and fighting you know in a tournament are two separate things because you're dealing more with choreography yeah. than you are with you know an actual uh, tournament yeah it's it's interesting that you bring that up I'd say for me the biggest takeaway for fighting on film is you need to have just as much commitment and expression but you have to be a lot more precise with your angles so that's something I'm working on whereas uh, in an actual tournament you're fighting against someone that's resisting you tooth and nail which then makes going against a stunt performer that's trying to assist you in a move way easier. So I think having both is, is really is really important. That's very nuanced, actually. Yeah. That's a great take. Sam, uh, my gosh, uh, is comedy, does that come easy for you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> if you're saying it, I, I guess. I think so. Um, I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, funny enough, I, I was working on social media videos, my, my full-time job was making these online comedy skits um, prior to the filming and the casting of The Brother's Son, so I guess I was well prepared, <laughs> to say the least. I would imagine working with uh, Michelle Yeoh has is, is got to be butter. Yeah, I mean, it's funny that you say that because I, I keep on telling people that it's it's effortless. It's, it's effortless to work with Michelle. She makes it so easy, you know? Um, it's like It's like playing basketball with Steph Curry. Or, or playing football with Tom Brady, you know, you're, you're gonna win like every game, you're gonna catch every throw that Tom Brady throws at you. And I think Michelle Yeoh is, is exactly like that too. She just, anything she gives you, it's like, that was a lot I could work off of right there. So it's, it's uh, great. Justin, I, I, our time is so limited, but tell me what you think audiences are gonna take away from The Brother's Son once they discover it. 
Well, I hope audiences enjoy the heck of a, uh, enjoy the heck out of our action sequences. I truly do think we have some of the best fighting on TV. I hope audiences laugh their socks off when they see see this guy and this handsome face. And we've got some really strong comedic <laughs> actors on their show, and some just absurd situations. But most importantly, I hope audiences can feel the heart of our show. You know, we've got yeah. very heartfelt moments. We have heartbreaking moments. So I hope when audiences watch this, they're perhaps inspired to cherish the time and the people around them that they love and to you know go after the dreams if they're able to uh it's it's a thrill-packed funny show like i said it's very campy in places such mm -hmm. a great great sense did you of finish it and, uh no i'm i'm on about the second to the last episode oh wow well, thank you for watching there. so much of it Go, girl, get what's yours. Or, or don't go, girl. Or at least pause, girl. Which brother are you? Take action and end this. I don't think we've ever hugged before. They're probably gonna die, so... Might as well get one in before you go. Thanks for joining us for Screen Chatter. If you'd like to follow us online, visit us at ScreenChatter.com. You can check out our many interviews, and you could also check out my reviews. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, we're available on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm Tony Toscano, and we'll see you next week right here for another Screen Chatter.